Greetings, greetings everyone. I wish you well for today and everyone. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking and comment. Keep uh, keep the, 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 the consistency, right? Just like, share and then let's comment. So today we're talking about Bitcoin. And again, um, I know in USA, some of you guys now you've got uh, some holiday. Washington's birthday and in Canada as well you've got the family day so hence why today we won't be uh, trading the New York session we'll only focus on the London so obviously London now it's already late as well so we're done so but then now it's a holiday that's the most important thing so but um, today I wanted us to discuss more about Bitcoin because it's thriving guys 1 million BTC now the question is how many Bitcoins do you have currently so welcome to the crypto chronicles where we break down the latest in the crypto world in today's episode we are diving into the historic moment of Bitcoin hitting 1 million per coin so share your thoughts on your crypto portfolio strategy are you holding strong are you considering selling? Join this conversation as we explore the captivating history of money. And, uh, you know, from the butter system, you know where the money used to be at the butter system, to the fiat currency. So we're going to delve why cryptocurrency is essential, right? Especially Bitcoin, you know, so uh, at the forefront of the financial revolution. So stay tuned, guys, and uh, stay informed about the valuable insights and engaging discussion that we'll be talking about today so now the question is how many bitcoin do you have how many bitcoin are you staking on how are you actually currently building your bitcoin portfolio yes of course uh, most of the time you know you find that you go through challenges where you know you just want to sell your bitcoins right but then now there are people who have the holding spirit no matter what you know they just keep holding their portfolio so um you know it also you know opens up to the discussion where we talk about bitcoin's rise right so introduction to bitcoin recent search uh, if you look at the recent days bitcoin has shattered records reaching an impressive 1 million per coin which is as well you know have been a historical number ever since right because now if you look at uh, bitcoin being the first cryptocurrency where we saw you know he, you know huge rise actually amazing rise so because now uh, imagine you know a currency rising from only a cent right in 2009 up until now in 2024 where it's worth a million so well, it's not surprising because this rise has captured the attention of the global financial community. So the question is, what's driving the search, right? What is driving this search of Bitcoin or what is driving this rise uh, of Bitcoin price? So if you look at the market trends and influencing factors like um, I want us to delve into, you know, the current market trends and explore the factors influencing, you know, this Bitcoin price, such as institutional interest, right? So um, if you look at, um, you know, microeconomy conditions, we see this growing mainstream accepting cryptocurrency everywhere. Recently, um, in 20, I think it was 2020 or 2021, I'll just, took, uh, I'll just look at my statistic correctly, where pick and pay they were actually introducing bitcoin as also one of their payment method so it's accepted everywhere digital platforms you know uh, especially in other countries remember in other countries people didn't have any um you know privilege to have or own you know their own identity so some are still struggling with having you know their uh, IDs, uh, proof of identity, so of, of, of which also leads them not to have a bank account or whatsoever. So now this uh, cryptocurrency, you know, opened up so many doors for a lot of people because for the first time they can be able to transact money from one place to another, you see. So yeah, it has been helpful for many because now uh, if you check the product and services, many stores, you know, they're accepting uh, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin as proof of payment, you see, which is as well one of the, you know, the, the, which makes this rise of Bitcoin as well. So now um you look at that as well you know the market analysis and predictions 
if you look at the expert, they suggest that this search may be linked into the increase of what you call the demand and limited supply, right? So we will analyze these predictions and uh, we discuss the potential scenarios of Bitcoin's future price movement, right? So now um, you look at, well, you know, during the sentimental uh, where, you know, they just a lot of fundamentals affecting the market, a lot of people tend to just buy Bitcoin right and then hold it in their portfolio and um, you know a lot of people are still believing the power of diamond hands where they just holding instead of them selling right so it's because of they understand their portfolio strategies because uh, we have what to call holding and we have what we call trading so which bitcoin you can just buy it and hold uh versus you just uh you know buying and trading it right so Yes, you can trade it. Yes, you can hold it. And especially now that brokers, uh, as, uh, you know, are now, you know, um, announcing or introducing Bitcoin as one of the categories of uh, crypto and some few cryptos that they've introduced. Right. So meaning one can always trade cryptocurrency in Forex. Right. So which is as well, you know, a lot of people are doing it. Right. Understanding all the technical analysis and also the fundamentals, then you're good to go. So if you look at Bitcoin, um, when it hits its new highs, right now, you have to ask yourself, what is your strategy? Because obviously when it reaches the new highs, right, it always uh, later retracing back because now it has created the new high, which is the new, you know, bearish break, we can say. So are you holding for long term? Or are you actually considering trading to capitalize on short term fluctuations? So now let's break it down, uh, you know, the pros and cons of each and appro uh, of the approach, right? Because now uh, we've got long termers and we've got uh, the short termers, right? Let's talk about holding and we'll talk about trading later uh, as well, considering the short term and the long term, right? So if you look at the holding part, um, short term. <coughs> Okay, somebody's just buying Bitcoin. So let's say maybe they are just buying fractions uh, of Bitcoin. Maybe, you, you know, your Bitcoin worth a thousand rents. And then now you're planning to maybe hold it for a short term. Let's say maybe your short term is three months to six months. And then now you find that during three months to six months, yes, maybe Bitcoin um, went up by 7% uh, or 15% or less. And then, you know, that's your income, right? But then if it hasn't rose uh, by 7% to 15%, because sometimes, yes, it can rise and you find that later it's now correcting. So now what happens to your time uh, of three months to six months, you know? So, but compared to somebody who's willing to wait a little bit longer, what happens? You know, they don't mind. You know holding bitcoins because now that bitcoin they understand in the long term the price will still soar right so imagine now if let's say you bought your bitcoins in 2009 and you're still holding them you know with the diamond hand believing that you know no matter what i do not sell you just hold keep holding so now when even bitcoin now after so many correction you know going down coming back you know playing around with a lot of people's emotions uh, especially those people who just buy at the top you know hoping that you know the bitcoin will double because imagine there are people who bought uh, at one million at the last cycle remember the bit the time when bitcoin was one million at the last cycle so uh, when was it COVID? so imagine they but they took one million and bought a, a bitcoin right hoping maybe you you see it will just keep breaking out the zones with them but what bitcoin did was to go back and retrace right it went as low as um 750 us uh 750,000 rands 600,000 rands you know almost what was it 500,000 rands at some point or 400,000 uh, rands so imagine uh 70 percent of your portfolio just going down you watching it right so obviously emotionally you'll just be affected and it will come to a point where you just want to sell right and that's the mistake because when you sell at the time uh, where you are in a loss already 70 percent then you will only get that amount of money that you sold at that price right so you won't get your million back you know it will just your three hundred thousands and that's it
So, but if you wait a little bit longer and no matter the emotions, you know that, uh, you know, the Bitcoin that you bought will forever be a one Bitcoin. The only thing that will change is the rise in fluctuations, uh, you know, so, or, uh, um, you know, this, uh, the, the, the down in, in, in uh, fluctuation as market goes up and down, the rise, you'll be affected by the, you know, the value of Bitcoin. But then now your Bitcoin will forever be what your one Bitcoin, you know. So if, even in 2034, you still have that one Bitcoin, you see. So people who understand the long term and then knowing that, OK, no matter what, I'm just going to hold my Bitcoin. I'm not going to sell it because now uh you know there are people who understand assets and there are people who also you know love liabilities so someone would take their million and buy the best latest car and someone would take their million and buy you know one bitcoin you know with the patience of holding uh for longer because they understand the power of sustainability but then now what happens to this person who bought their um you know uh the latest machine Remember, any car, once you, bought, you buy it now, it loses value, right? It depreciates in value. So there's no way that you're going to sell it at the same price where you bought it, right? So obviously, it's going to be uh, the lesser price than the one you bought it, right? So you, what happens after five years? Remember, each and every time, there's always a release of new car, new car, new car, new car, new car, right? So... Uh, it never ends because now it's capitalist system they do understand how you know uh, they lure you into this latest new models and then you know you just keep buying and buying and buying and then three years later your car is no longer the best car we used to see is now you know something that actually lost value in people's eyes because now they've seen the new latest cars the beautiful cars than the one that you have you see so that's just you you never keep up you know it's just circle capitalists now they're sitting down in the boardrooms how can we design the next best car how uh, you know could we maybe put it uh this way or this way, they're, they're, they're strategizing, you know, it's business at the end of the day. So they understand how business need to be run, right? They are in the boardroom discussing, they're working on how they're going to, you know, capture the, 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 the also new masses who are also interested in those things, right? So all they want is money, right? Money, uh, the movement of money, uh, you know, money for value. So it matters what you consider as your value you see so let's continue with our bitcoins and uh, as i'm talking about risk management right so risk management tips someone asked what are the risk management tips that you can give me so managing your risk is crucial right you need to understand that it's very crucial uh, in terms of in the times of volatility right so because now when we talk about the world of cryptocurrency here yeah, we're talking about uh, very volatile market right but then long term if you are actually just holding and planning to hold your bitcoins for longer right and then you can then see the value over a long period of time unlike just uh, buying and selling now in a short term then you wouldn't actually notice the value but you know there are people who are uh we now we're going to talk about trading as well right so trading as well you can make a lot of money trading bitcoin right so there are people who are trading bitcoins maybe for short term and there are people who are trading bitcoins for long term so what are people who trade bitcoin for short term let's say they're trading it on the forex market or it could be the etfs right so which are highly actually volatile right and very 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 you can get liquidated if you don't have uh, enough margin uh, to hold and uh, if you're in a drawdown right so you have to have more margin so in case of drawdowns then you can come back uh, stronger and then holding that same positions and then well, until it pays you back you see so but then now the challenge is um, <clears throat> you go all in chasing 100% 100 times uh, in ETFs and what happens if the market you know uh, continues going down because here's here's the thing with Bitcoin you can never know what could be um, you know the direction you know even the gurus try to you know analyze it technically but you you you, you eventually break out of their zones the way they they, they just keep tracking the volume and uh, moving their strategy as beyond as they're tracking it
but you can never understand its volume to a point where you say you know what now is actually the right time uh, to buy bitcoin scott fundamentally as well as driven by different uh, things microeconomics and as well sentimentally as well what are people thinking uh, on the ground uh, concerning what's happening now in the market you see and technically as well yes um I, I still feel like if you trade it on a longer time frame, right, you can always get it right because with longer time frame, they, you just patiently wait for your levels while as well you're focusing on buying low and then selling high. So not focusing on buying the metal or whatsoever because that's going just to confuse you, right? So understand how the candlestick closed on the previous day, like I said on yesterday's, um, you know, you, you must go and watch it. And then you understand how, you know, we, 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 you can understand candlesticks. So risk management tips. Um, I talked about, you know, cryptocurrency being volatile, right? So, and then here we talk about risk management, how you can just manage your portfolio so that, you know, during this impact of microeconomics trends in crypto portfolio, you are also still safe, you know? So, uh, like I said yesterday, when cryptocurrency, you know that uh, it has reached its all-time highs, then you can just, you know, um, if you're trading it, then you can just um, hedge it, right? Knowing that, okay, you're going to sell at, at this point as it correcting and saving your capital until you understand now it's ready to just go back and uh, break its all-time high and then you can reduce the sell there'll be profit already and then you can allow your buys to move freely because now the reason why we do this is, is not to lose positions uh you know it's not to lose positions because once you lose positions right so it's going to be a big problem it's going to be a big problem because of uh, we are capitalizing on position in sizing, right? So the position that you bought the Bitcoin at, you can never actually get it ever, right? So if you bought Bitcoin at 16,000 and then you sold it at 18,000, Bitcoin unfortunately can never go to 16,000 at the moment. It's now at 1 million, you see. So you lost that position when you sell. You see, so unlike you just holding it, you never lose that position. You'll forever eat the money on that position. So you understand why we do have uh, hold holders uh, or holding people and why we have, you know, just general traders. I'm actually both holder and as well the trader, you see. So now let's talk about uh, the outlook of this long term, you know, scenario, right? So. What's the outlook on Bitcoin on a long-term investment? So I'll still say Bitcoin is still going to soar, right? So although it will take its time because now it needs to correct there and there before, uh, you know, it, 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 it adjusts its entries. So just like that, just like that. So now you just keep holding and uh, believe in the future of cryptocurrency, you know? You, you've seen the miracles that it has done so far you know, by reaching the highest price ever. You know, even the government are shocked. What is actually behind this Bitcoin? Could it be trillion in the next years? We'll never know, you know. But um, yesterday when we did an analysis, um, I did also do the live streaming about it, where I talked about um, over how many, maybe this year they're predicting to have maybe new users bitcoin let's say maybe 20 million over plus that you see so you can see the numbers crazy already so people are getting hands on it you know so the evolution of money where are we coming from historically overview we need to understand you know where are we today in order for us to understand where actually are we coming from we need to look back Right, so from the butter system to the gold back currency and the fiat money, right, that we actually currently using this money that keeps being printed all the time. So there's no actually a fixed supply in the fiat currency. That's why money lose value. That's why, you know, in those times of inflation, when you go to the shop with the little that you have, it doesn't have any value. We can only buy you few limited items, right? So we'll trace this fascinating evolution of money throughout the history. 
So um, we look at the challenges of traditional, you know, system that used to be used at that time. So if we highlight the limitations and the challenges of tradition, you know, traditional financial system, then we will understand how we're going to discuss the issues that have paved the way for the emergence uh, of this decentralized and digital currency. You see, so obviously Satoshi at some point he sit down and said, you know what, I'm sick and tired of the government money. I'm sick and tired of how they're treating our people. Maybe it's time I become a leader and design something for my people that, you know, everyone will be proud of in the next, uh, you know, generation to the generation and generation to come. That's what he did. And they even got successful now because they're anonymous. Imagine if, you know, they knew who they were. So obviously this wasn't going to be at some point successful, but everything because of the power of, of blockchain, the technology behind it, you know, everything that is registered on a blockchain can never be deleted. So Bitcoin will forever be there. You see, so and uh, there will only forever be 21 million Bitcoin that ever existed, which actually as well, you know, we're talking about the fixed supply here, right? So once they generated the 21 million Bitcoin, which was their supply, they will never add another, you know, uh, uh, another supply on top. So you look at the government money, how they are actually running their money. So they do not have any uh, fixed supply, you know, come COVID-19, they'll tell you they printed billions of money. Come any situation, they will always print a lot of money all the time, right? So that's why, you know, um, we can never actually trust the currency that we use it, you know, because it's, it's, it's losing value. Like this inflation interest rate, I'm sure it's opening your eyes to see you know the world as it is right so and how this bitcoin is shaping the narrative around financial freedom so those challenges of traditional system as well they have their own impact right so we look at the cryptocurrency as a solution now uh, you know driving away from those traditional system right we look at cryptocurrency as a solution so how do cryptocurrency particularly Bitcoin, because now <laughs> the headline is Bitcoin. How do we, how does this, you know, Bitcoin address the shortcomings of traditional money? So we will explore in the, you know, revolutional aspects of blockchain technology, because now you check out the users of blockchain, now it's crazy. Uh, latest, I hear that, um, you know, people, I mean, the, 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 the what, what do you call, the hospital data and everything, will now be using blockchain as their technology to save their data, you know? So I already said that uh, all these users of blockchain, if we look at the police station, they can find a use on it, right? Because of instead of crying about uh, the missing dockets uh, of the files that they cannot find anymore, why can't they just store the information on a blockchain, safe and secure? every file will be stored there every number every case number will be stored there you know so then they don't have to look around right because blockchain now saves a lot you know so and as well it brings a lot of trust because uh, you look at the transaction of money now through bitcoins everyone who wants to see the latest cryptocurrency transaction they can just go on the blockchain and then you know track it um, everything is just transparent, you know, with the blockchain technology. So now as we really defining this concept of money, I also want us to look at the Bitcoin's role in shaping the future of finance, right? The key value, uh, you know, the, the important thing, right? The key values, uh, example, let's say maybe if we can examine Bitcoin's unique features, like including decentralizations because now we look at bitcoin is decentralized right there is no centralized um, authorities like you know your banks uh, who are actually involved in controlling the money or your government who are actually controlling anything is decentralized meaning everyone can have a voice everyone can have the voting power everyone you know can use it it's the money for the people you know so 
Uh, that's why we saw the increase of uh, decentralized uh, autonomous organizations, which were say, which were organizations saying, you know what, we believe in the decentralizations, and uh, with the idea of this decentralization, we believe people should be in charge. People should actually, you know, whatever that they're involved in, they as well need to have a voice, you know, have the voting power instead of the um corporate you know taking decisions for them remember who is who have the power remember every company in this world they need people in order for them to be the most powerful companies that ever existed right so we cannot argue that so now if you need people in order for you to survive and um you need people like let's talk about uh, this you know big retails your, your supermarkets and everything they need people in order for their goods and services um in order for them to share that value and to get exchange for that value right to get money monetary value for the, what they are selling you see so now as they are busy selling all those goods and services right what happens they 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 making more money as they are actually because you know they 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 demanding money right all they do is just supplying you they're selling you which is supply and they're demanding you, uh, the money right which is buying from you so um yes i'm just uh checking your questions guys i take your questions and someone says i love that is scarcity yes it's scarcity you know it's scarce you see, so uh, uh, as I was just comparing with, with it, just uh, being printed a lot of money through the fiat currency with this one is scarce, you know, you can never actually hear that uh, there will be any more printing more Bitcoins and stuff like that. Censorship as well, uh, it's very important, right? So we'll discuss how this all aspects you know, they bring about uh, the potential disruptor uh in this world of finance because now bitcoin being the most aspect in the most aspects of, uh, of position the best position now since well being the first cryptocurrency that ever existed you know so now beyond currency we're looking beyond in its role right we're looking beyond its role as a currency so now let's explore the broader concept let's explore the broader applications of this uh you know blockchain technology as we said that everyone can use it for whatever uses that they feel like as long as it's registered on a blockchain then it will forever be there and yesterday i was um reflecting more on how you know i used to see only sixteen thousand bitcoin on the coin market cap which are you uh, shows you how many bitcoins are registered in the blockchain which are registered with their you know platform but you realize that there are more, right? There are more. Currently now, they are sitting over 100,000 of cryptocurrencies which are registered on the blockchain, right? So that's why we need to, you know, explore all these uh, broader concepts. Why? Because people understand the applications, right? They understand these applications of blockchain technology from the decentralized finance to what we call the DeFi, which is uh, the same thing, uh, you know, decentralized finance, right? We just call it defined cryptocurrency to non fungible tokens, which are NFTs, where we saw people, you know, for the first time uh, converting, you know, their art into something of value, right? So whatever picture like this, I can just, you know, make it an NFT, right? And um, because of that, then I know, okay, it's me who actually created it and now i've got ownership right so of that so that's why it's much safe even musicians we saw them enrolling their music into the nfts right so that they can own something because we saw a lot of people stealing other people's concepts you know yeah so it, we can avoid such things so what roles does bitcoin play in shaping the future of finance so comment below let me know guys what do you think about all these questions remember i said it's an engagement uh forum 
so i'm asking you all these questions so that as well you can learn back to back and uh, you can as well engage right so um let me know your thoughts your thoughts matters by the way so we'll be taking live questions your comment and uh, we'll be as well sharing your experiences your insights and the questions about bitcoin and crypto market right because we are building a community we are encouraging collaboration and community engagement as well so we aim to foster what we call a dynamic dialogue right that contributes to the collective knowledge and understanding the crypto space as well so uh in closing Thank you guys for joining us in this episode of Crypto Chronicles. So we have covered, we have covered a lot of things. Uh, let me know what um, I haven't covered or what you would like to wish to learn about. And um, yeah, so, and on the next episode as well, I'm going to give you the best cryptocurrency that you can stake for your portfolio. So, but it's going to be a separate video. So, um, it will be because you guys are engaging more and how I'm seeing your engagement. So it will encourage me to actually give you those cryptocurrency. And if not, then I won't be, I won't feel inspired to do it for you guys. Cause what, what would I be doing it for, you know? So all I can say is stay informed, stay engaged and continue exploring the exciting world of cryptocurrency. We do have um, WhatsApp channels where we share our cryptocurrency uh, insights you know so if you're interested in exploring more you want maybe um, a mentorship so let us know we will drop the whatsapp link here and then you can just get to us and uh, how you can trade cryptocurrency there are just many ways whether you want to be a new beginner and holding or if you want to be you know the best trader trading cryptocurrency we also do have a best system that actually track the market for you, does the market analysis for you, does open trades for you automatically and close the trades for you automatically. So you guys, you know, you can inquire on the link below and let us assist you with what you be um, happy about, right? So all the services, they are catered for your needs. So it's base group uh custom you know for your thing so if you want your private mentorship during your time um you know those things can be as well pro be provided for you so let me know until next time um happy holding and may the blockchain be with you because we are safe with the blockchain right so yeah until next time bo -bo -bo -bo. see you guys Yep.